Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Wyatt. I'm a general dentist, but I've done nothing but orthodontics for the last well, 40 some odd years, or started 1970. I'm a member of the, the AOS, or the American Orthodontic Society, and uh, this is a society of general and pediatric dentists that are devoted totally to educating the general dentist and the pedodontist or any other dentist that interested in orthodontics in orthodontics to teach you a good sound basis for orthodontics and that's an excellent organization to get in I'm board certified in this organization and if you uh, want to learn orthodontics now you can learn it you have to go to a lot of seminars and classes in this but you can learn orthodontics and if you pass the boards of the American Orthodontic Society uh, you can sure do orthodontics all right I'm, this is the uh, second part of a uh, series of uh, lectures here on congenitally missing teeth or people with just many missing teeth. This, this next case is not near as uh, bad as the first one we showed you. It's not missing all that many teeth but uh, it's a similar thing and uh, we'll go through it with you. Now, usually in these cases, excuse me, let me get back here. Uh, the general rule, we put the teeth that they have back in the correct positions the uh, best we can. And then after we're finished, the person matures, they can put implants and bridges and sometimes until they get older, we'll put just uh, maybe a temporary partial or some type of retainer with a saddle on it that uh, keeps the upper teeth from, or upper or lower teeth from moving together and also holds the space open for the place uh, where the teeth will go. Uh, so we'll show you two more cases here and how we treat it. They're a little different. Uh, how we treated each of these cases. This young man is a nice looking guy. He's got a good vertical height of the face. is uh, almost ideal. Got a good prominent chin. It's not class 3-ish at all, but it's very prominent. Uh, nice looking guy. And when you look at him from the front, you'll notice that the chin is kind of off to the left a little bit. Not not a great deal, but the left side of the jaw is shorter than the right side of the jaw, and it's kind of tilted around to the side. And I think i uh, show some pictures of him when he's a little older, and uh, this uh, problem is a little worse as when he gets several years older. Uh, right now he's missing, looks like most of his, all of his lower bicuspids and he's got a lower left uh, cuspid and lateral that look like they're fused together. It's hard to tell which teeth they are. Uh, looking at it from the side, he has a good vertical height of the face. There's no problem there and he uh, just looks quite good. The bite is a little deep now. These teeth go up to here and these down to this point. And uh, that molar is a little class 3-ish, but actually he's definitely not class 3 So it's kind of moved up against some of the bicuspids there. Now, I don't show any pictures of him back uh, when, he, when we first started. Uh, to speak of, but I've got pictures of his models I'll show you at the end of the case. Now, let's see. 
here we have removed the deciduous teeth that he had and there's a lot considerable amount of bone structure that is gone or I didn't take them out but I guess his regular dentist did and uh, we're going to come in and and maintain this base we'll put some pads in here and run a little little kind of a temporary partial like uh, device that he'll wear with these pads that keep the space open or could increase it and then have something for these upper teeth to chew against like that. It's a, this is a pretty simple case. Now this is a, a couple of teeth that are fused together right here so we just use them as one big tooth and kind of smooth them off on the top and line them up on the outside so they look uh, good and they function uh, rather good. So we'll proceed on here. We've got a lot of pictures here. I'm going to run through them pretty quick. You can follow the times. Uh, we've already been uh, have worked on it for some time here and taking the teeth out and letting things go. This is night three of 1993. Uh, and one interesting thing here for a while we didn't use any blocks in there but we had a step down arch in here which we can spread these legs out and actually open that gap or we close the gap and when you push the tooth one way or the other with a step down it actually takes the roots with the teeth also so the step down arch is a good arch to learn how to use and then we had an intruding wire where we opened in the bite. See, these teeth were a good bit further up here. So this wire is pushing down. It's, this is an intruding wire. It's out here. And it's got a spring-like device put on and brought up here. So it's bringing the lower anterior teeth down in this uh, way. The upper looked pretty good, so we didn't put a whole lot of upward force on it but maybe some recurse curve in the upper arch wire to uh, pick it up. Now I'll jump over some of these. We got a little spacing in here. Now the tissue down there is healed up pretty good and uh, we are using this space. We are putting that little pads in there. There it is. You can just build uh, something for yourself. We bonded some material on these to keep them from coming up while you're lowering these anterior teeth. And then we build these blocks that we put on this little bar. You see this bar in here. And that he wears kind of like a retainer and chews on this whatever the pressure you can actually if you can put a good bit of pressure there you can intrude the upper teeth that are coming down against uh, that and it works pretty good for just to elevate those teeth if you put a little extra force on these by cuspids if they've kind of sunk down you know like that and you can actually uh, over a period of a few months just keep putting pressure on them but your t tissue underneath here won't take but so much pressure. So you have a little trouble. Now we've got the, the stents. You can put a one in the roof of the mouth, one on the buckle, and run an elastic underneath there and pick the teeth up themselves uh, with the stents, which is probably better than uh, trying to do it with this. It's more, I think anything you can fix is much more efficient. So here we are with this intruding wire, the uh, rectangular wire where we're controlling the torque of the uh, lower anterior teeth and we've intruded them and they're wearing these little wing brackets which are excellent brackets to use. They have a single bracket space but they have these wings that you can bend up or down and it helps you rotate the teeth very good.
uh, with them. Uh, not a lot that we need to spend a uh, you know, whole lot of time on. The upper lined it up, got it going quite good. Open the bite, we kept this in there. And so we'll run through several of these. Now the cusp of these teeth are touching the acrylic so that keeps them up here even though they've got an arch wire. You need to put some force on them to keep them in place where they just hang in there. Sometimes the tooth will drift down where the lingual cusp will come down lower than the buccal cusp. That the root of the tooth kind of goes inside. If it sits there for a long time, it doesn't, uh, you don't have any contact on it. Now the teeth up here, we've got some spacing in there. We will go in and try to close all that up. This is that fused tooth down here that we are lining up. Now when you've got all this stuff down in here, your, your retainer is kind of hard to move the teeth that come into contact with unless you relieve them some. You can line them up. Now tooth like this, we'd smooth it up from the occlusal and then smooth the lingual and the buckle a little bit to line that tooth up, that fused tooth, it uh, make it look pretty good. Now, let's see, we're, now we've got the bite open quite well, and we put him in retainers, and uh, he's got this lower retainer, and we use a wraparound retainer, we don't use anything crossing the acrylic. And these pads are on this retainer, and the teeth up above come down and touch, touch this, and this acrylic pad in here holds the space open while we wait for him to mature. So this is uh, something you use as a interim period there. This fused tooth, we've got it lined up. We just put one bracket on it. You see right there. And these wings and we kind of control it. Might want to smooth it off some uh, to make it look a little better and then we'll try to squeeze that space together. Here. Well we've squeezed it pretty good and uh, we've still got some space over here but you try to get good interdigitation too. So if I sacrifice the interdigitation to close the space it usually opens up again because the interdigitation what wins out over where the upper teeth press down into the lower teeth press inside of them and if they interdigitate it uh, really good at a certain spot that's usually where the tooth uh, goes to or drifts to in there so again the same thing I think we got several pictures here which are Need to go through pretty, pretty quick. Up above now we've got just a very slight amount of space up there. Not a big, big deal. And this is going along fine. Here, here are the, the models. You can see how deep the bite was when we started. And we pushed these teeth down. And did that with an arch wire coming off the six year molars back here that went around like that and had a kind of a spring up in here and was activated quite a bit and it keeps the pressure on that and it'll intrude the lower anterior teeth. It has those blocks on it won't they chewing on that won't let this push these teeth out of place when you have that. Okay, there's the upper uh, way it was there. Now on the side, you see how deep the bite was, and this is where we extracted these teeth. That in here, that looked like this one big molar we took out of that area. <clears throat> on the other side, he had a couple of bicuspids. We took them out, kind of cleared that out brought this down in, turned it around, whatever is necessary, 
did some of these minor regular orthodontic things, opening the bite. But I wanted to just illustrate what we do with these missing teeth, you see. Now, this is the retention where he wore it. And he would wear that until he got something put in this space permanent and fill that out. And this is 93 at some time after we started this uh, case, uh, somewhere in the 80s. And that fused tooth looks pretty good, really. You kind of shape it up and it, it'll look, look pretty good. That's another view of it. And you, you can see the upper arch. We normally widen everything out. It just looked better if you look at somebody they smile and you see teeth back in here. We got these little narrow mouths, you see a gap back in this area. But if you spread it out, they just are nicer looking smiles. So we usually do that and the tongue gets adapted to it and we keep it retained for years after we get through with it. Now that's where it is after we got through. By the way, we expand the teeth and the bone goes with the teeth. If you intrude the tooth, the bone goes with it as you intrude it too. And that's hard to get across to people. Now the lower is a kind of a narrow arch to situation too. And so we're going to probably widen it out as we go a little bit. You're not a great deal, uh, but some. Now, this was 86, I guess, when I took this model. It was 94. Now, that's widened out some. Is that not widened as much as we did the upper? And this is the lower anterior. This is that fused tooth. You see, it's lined up too, right in here, real good. And it can last the rest of the guy's life, you know. That's the lower retainer removed. It has that saddle. This is the young man after we finish. And this chin has kind of moved a little more off to the side. Uh, boys grow a long time after girls stop. Like I've had them grow 21, 22 years old, and th their chins come out a lot when they uh, grow older like that. So this right side that was growing more, uh, continued to grow a little bit more than that, but he's not off to the point where his teeth don't fit at all, and so... Most of the time, this won't hamper him in life and the way he looks. And, uh, so most people get along quite good with that. Rather than send him into surgery to operate on the jaw and the condyle to shorten this, and it's a real pain. You have to do the orthodontics over too. And so most people just rather really go along with it. Now you can see the uh, midline of the lowest, the centrals are off some, the smile lines a little down, the, it's not perfect in other words, of course none of us are. All right, now this next case <coughs> is a, a real neat little girl. She's lost some of her posterior teeth, her molars and stuff bicuspids, whatever it was. And she has wisdom teeth and second molars. And I'll show you what we did here. We used a reverse headgear on her. This is the neatest little gal. She, we used to pick at her, and she'd pick at us. And she it's just always full of life. This a neat little girl. I think I've got some pictures of her about 20 something years later. This full of mischief had a missing lateral right here and then a peg lateral over there 
and we have to spread this one out and put a bridge in it and then the peg ladder we crown and there's closer you can see this this has got to move back over here and we'll open this gap up something like that you know and we'll open this one we'll go back with this cuspid open it further so we make a lateral here that'll be the same size as the lateral that we're going to put in this opening here and then we'll take the rest of the teeth now and we're going to extract the deciduous teeth and we're going to pull the posterior teeth forward into the gap and fill that in and that's not very difficult to do really uh, I did this case in 1971, so it's going to be in bands, but it's exactly the same living thing, you see. Now we'll open this up and we're going to put a bridge, I mean a crown on that tooth, or somebody will, we didn't do it. Now we take the deciduous bores, these are ankylos, we're going to extract them, and we'll have a gap here pretty wide. Then we take these teeth and drag them to the front and close that space. Now you'll see this on x-ray. It means more to you looking at it like that. So the other side of the mouth, we did the same thing. Where we're going to move that cuspid back and take those teeth out. And we'll, now you can see the cuspid of where the lateral's missing in the little peg lateral and the gap where the deciduous teeth still are. Same thing on the bottom part. And you can see how deep the bite is. The teeth go up here in the roof of the mouth. Just about. The They're not actually chewing in like that other one of those cases was. Okay, we're, I show these as if you're on the inside of the mouth. So this will be the the uh, left side, this will be the right side right here. It's just like you were inside and took a picture of it. And we've got two good, there, what I think, this young lady is 12 years old, see. And these are not real 12-year molars. They look to me like they're wisdom teeth. And these molars aren't coming in uh, maybe the 12 year molars were congenitally or uh, or the 6 year molars were congenitally missing just nothing there and we've got a bicuspid the cuspid and the bicuspid in both places so it looks as if there's just a big second bicuspid missing in this case and if these are 12 year molars, there's a wisdom tooth missing back here. If these are wisdom teeth, then there's a set 12 year molar in here somewhere that just didn't develop. <coughs> anyway, we've got two molars missing and four second bicuspids and one lateral missing. <coughs> Excuse me, we told this young lady what we were going to have to do in this case and how we would have to uh, do it. And she'd have to wear this reverse headgear. And she agreed to uh, do that. And she did. She wore it. And I'm going to go to another picture here. And here we are. We've taken the teeth out. What you want to do is have everything on there, and then the day you take the teeth out, have your braces already in there, and then start pulling these teeth forward. The day you take the teeth out. So leave them there till you're ready. Okay, we took them out. You got some rotations. And we've got to push this. Uh, cuspid back right here and bring it over there kind of parallel the root you need to bring the root back too and open up the space so we can put a 
uh, you can put a lateral in there, you could put an implant now. Then back then, you didn't hardly anybody use an implant, they just weren't too good. Uh, now, the space is up here. Okay, space again on the bottom. All right, we then put her in a hickam chin cup and the thing rotates off of the chin down here and you pull the elastics back in this area pulls them back so it's pulling real tight with the elastic and that pulls pressure off of the uh, chin and that makes the chin go forward and that pulls this down this down here so it pulls on the top of their head and we always kid her wearing that thing but she she got real good at it. if you bend these very skillfully you can keep the that white tag coming up in there uh, this card all right if you well I've got to go back to my uh, Slide, slide show picture there. I screwed up something and get my little marking pen back. All right, I think we're back in business now. Uh, anyway, it pivots off that. They can throw their hair forward, put the strap down, put their hair back over, and you don't see anything back there. And she was carrying on with, with us and kind of pick at her and but she just came right back at us you know just I mean it's, it's just nice to have kids like that in the practice I enjoyed her and uh, here's the thing going and we got the space out and these bands are in there though. I think maybe sometimes we ought to have people you do one or two banded cases just so you appreciate the brackets man it's so much more difficult with bands you know. now this is a tooth banded which we still do well, we bond brackets on plastic teeth you see and do the same thing with them and trim them off and fill them in there and you torque this back in there a little bit and you can't actually tell that it's not a tooth when you first look at it now this one over here, you open up a space. We just open it on one side. We come in and do the crown uh, on that later. I didn't do it now. I send them out to their dentist uh, where they do the crown. And that looks pretty good. And you go through it and level and line up everything and do your regular old orthodontics on it now. And, uh, and we're getting pretty close to finishing the case up it's uh, lined up pretty good we've got a gap enough over there we got space for this uh, tooth and we'll take this tooth and incorporate it in the retainer you see and we'll have a tongue come out in here of acrylic to hold that space open take this band we'll take this bands off you see uh, <clears throat> down on the bottom, similar thing. The teeth are coming in back there. They're not in now, but we'll watch her. This is a close-up of the Hickam chin cup. Now, Dr. Hickam was a pretty smart old bird boy because he figured out a way to put pressure coming out. Now, this... this it kind of tends to break the chin out in here, but you put a lot of pressure on this jaw, and it actually has effect on the TMJ. Now, if you've got somebody with a real sore or sensitive TMJ, then they can't wear these or can't wear them during the nighttime. They sometimes wear them during the day when you've got muscle activity and keeps the teeth uh, 
forward, can hold the jaw forward and keeps the pressure off the, uh, the TMJ area. Alright, this is a reverse Hickam chin cup. Now, now that's where we were to start with, you see. Now she had some pretty ferocious cavities and we had to do a lot of, uh, when I say weave, I didn't do it, now, but somebody had some pretty big fillings to take care of for us there. <clears throat> and they did, and it's, uh, these are, since she's 12 years old, these are, I think, kind of a early wisdom tooth, or a real late 12 year more. And then these baby teeth get sucked under like that, they're nearly always ankylosed. And so we go ahead and put uh, take them out, open the space up, and just come in from the back with those uh, second or third motors, whichever one they are. Uh, the others are missing. So we're missing teeth here, 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 and here. So we've got, there's eight. Nine teeth as this young lady is actually missing, and then one partially formed tooth there. So that's a pretty big order in itself. Now let's see. And here we've got it lined up and coming along good. Now the uh, lateral over here and they, this is where you've got your false tooth on this side it's, I mean, it's down like that and we watch the case for a while and to take everything off this closes this band space and this tooth will drift over and kind of fit in here and let me see if that shows. Okay, it's one of the panorex. You see the molars, the posterior molars are drifting forward. Now we catch them and bring them on forward, and do something. Because now this is 05, and that other picture back there was 73 <laughs> so that next picture there from 73 that's 27 and 5 and 32 years difference in the, this panorex right here and the panorex right here so you can see how that went. Now, this is the self of her after we finished. Just a little, the jaws back just slightly, but a very attractive young lady and a wonderful personality. And this is good orthodontics you can uh, I think every dentist ought to know about uh, how to deal with these teeth uh, if possible I'm going to stop this deal